Our objectives in this lesson are the following. Derive the formula for computing the appropriate sample size. Solve problems involving sample size determination. And know the effect of the standard deviation, margin of error, and level of confidence to sample size. Let's have a quick review of our previous lesson. A survey of 15 senior high school students of St. Paul Integrated School shows that they read on average 10 hours per week with a standard deviation of 2 hours. Assume that the distribution is normal. Make a conclusion on the average reading time of St. Paul's senior high school students at 98% confidence level. Let us determine first our given. So we have here a survey of 15 students. So our n is equal to 15. And then we have here average of 10 hours. So this is the sample mean. And standard deviation of 2 hours that is also pertaining to the sample. So sample is standard deviation. And 98% confidence level. This is an example of sample size less than 30. And population standard deviation is unknown. But the distribution is normal. If this is the case, we're going to use t-distribution. If we are going to use the t-distribution, we need the degrees of freedom. And that is equal to the sample size minus 1. So 15 minus 1 is equal to 14. Degrees of freedom equals 14. With confidence level 98% and 14 degrees of freedom, let's have our t-table. Let's look for 98%. It's here. Let us box this column. And 14 degrees of freedom. The t-value that we are looking for is 2.624. Let us recall our margin of error formula. Let us substitute the values T sub alpha over 2 is 2.624, S is 2, and N is equal to 15. And this will give us 1.36. For the lower limit, that is the sample mean minus the margin of error, so 10 minus 1.36, and that is 8.64. For the upper limit, that is the sample mean plus the margin of error. 10 plus 1.36 is 11.36. Therefore, our interval is mu is less than 11.36 but greater than 8.64. Now, let us have our conclusion. We are 98% confident that the average reading time of St. Paul's senior high school students is between 8.64 hours and 11.36 hours. Our discussion for today will focus on sample size, and there are three factors affecting the sample size. These are margin of error, level of confidence, and standard deviation. These two, margin of error and level of confidence, can be controlled by the researcher. Just remember, if you want less error, be sure to get more samples, and the more confident you want to be, the bigger the sample size you need to consider. Now, let us derive the formula for the sample size. It all started with the formula of the margin of error. I'll remove first the parentheses here, and then I'll write the denominator of Z sub alpha over 2, which is 1. And then I am going to combine the two numerators and the two denominators. A square root of n times 1 is still a square root of n. And then I could multiply both sides by square root of n to eliminate this square root of n here. Or I can simply apply cross multiplication. Since I want n, then I have to eliminate this e here. So I'm going to divide both sides by e. So these two e's here will cancel out. So I have a square root of n is equal to c sub alpha over 2 times sigma all over e. Since we only want n, not a square root of n, I am going to square both sides. In this way, I can cancel the square root symbol here and the exponent 2. So n is equal to z sub alpha over 2 times sigma all over e all raised to the second power. 
This is the formula that we are going to use in this lesson. There is a rule in rounding up for sample size and that is always round up to the next whole number. Why? Because the computed sample size based on the formula is always the minimum sample size. And if you are going to round down, then the sample size that you will get is below the minimum. And always remember, the larger the sample, the less the error. Let's have example number one. Compute for the appropriate sample size if the margin of error is 3, with population in standard deviation of 10 and 95% confidence level. Make a conclusion. Let us determine first the given here. We have margin of error equal to 3. Population standard deviation, sigma, is equal to 10. And 95% confidence level. If it is 95%, then the critical value is 1.96. Let us recall the formula that we just derived earlier. Let us substitute the values 1.96 for Z sub alpha over 2, 10 for sigma, and 3 for E. And this will give us 42.68. Always remember, round up. So this is equal to 43. Now let us make our conclusion. To be 95% confident that the estimate differs from true mean by 3, this is the margin of error, a sample of at least 43 is needed. Let's have another one. The college president asked the statistics teacher to estimate the average age of the students at their college. How many samples are needed? The statistics teacher would like to be 99% confident that the estimate should be accurate within one year. From a previous study, the standard deviation of the ages is known to be 3 years. Make a conclusion. So we have here the confidence level of 99%. If it is 99%, our critical value is 2.575. Our margin of error, accurate within one year. So E is equal to 1. And our standard deviation is equal to 3. Our formula for N, let us substitute the values 2.575 for C sub alpha over 2, 3 for sigma, and 1 for E. And this will give us 59.68. Round up equals 60. So, to be 99% confident that the estimate differs from the true mean by one year, a sample of at least 60 is needed. Let us do extra challenge. Suppose a similar study conducted five years ago regarding senior high school smokers has a standard deviation of 25. How many students you need to survey? using 99% confidence level so that the margin of error is not more than letter A, 10, letter B, 5, and letter C, 3. So first, let us identify what we have here, standard deviation of 25. So this study was conducted 5 years ago. This standard deviation is considered the population standard deviation. We have 99% confidence level. If it is 99%, again, our C value is 2.575. Our margin of error, let's start with letter A. E is equal to 10. Our formula for N, let us substitute our values here. And this will give us 41.44. Round up, this is equal to 42. Next, let us solve for margin of error equal to 5. Let us substitute the values in our formula. And this will give us 165.77. Round up, 166. And last one, let us solve for margin of error equal to 3. Let's have our formula for our n and let us substitute our values here. And this will be 460.46. Round up, this is equal to 461. Now let us analyze the effect of margin of error to sample size. 
when our margin of error is 10, our n is 42. Margin of error is 5, our n is 166. Margin of error is 3, our n is 461. What do you notice? As the margin of error gets smaller, the sample size gets larger. Another extra challenge, same situation, but this time we are going to change the standard deviation. So let's have our given first, 99% confidence level. If it is 99%, again, our critical value is 2.575. Margin of error is not more than 5, E is equal to 5. And our sigma, letter A, is 25. Let's have our formula for N. Let us substitute 2.575 for C sub alpha over 2, 25 for sigma, and 5 for E. And this will give us 165.77. Round up, this is equal to 166. Now, let's have a standard deviation equal to 15. Again, our formula, let us substitute our values here. And this is equal to 59.68. Round up, this is equal to 60. And last one, is standard deviation equal to 5. Our formula for N again, let us substitute our values. And this is equal to 6.63. Round up, this is equal to 7. Now let us analyze the effect of a standard deviation to sample size. When our standard deviation is 25, our n is 166. Standard deviation is 15, n is 60. And standard deviation of 5, n is 7. So what do you observe? As the standard deviation gets lower, the sample size gets lower too. Quick tips, always round up the computed sample size to the next whole number. The lower the margin of error, the larger sample size is needed. The lower the level of confidence, the smaller sample size is needed. The lower the standard deviation, the smaller sample size is needed. To reduce the error of estimate, you may, letter A, consider a larger sample size, or letter B, reduce the level of confidence. Now, it is time to check your understanding. Pause this video for more time. Let us answer same situation with extra challenge, but this time we are going to change our confidence level. So for the given, we have here standard deviation of 25. Margin of error, that more than 5, so E is equal to 5. And let's have first confidence level equal to 99%. Again, 99%, the critical value is 2.575. Our formula for N, let us substitute our values here. And this is equal to 165.77. Round up, 166. Now, let us have confidence level equal to 95%. And if it is 95% or 0.95, our critical value is 1.96. Here is our formula for N. Let us substitute our values here. And this is equal to 96.04. Round up, 97. And last one, confidence level equal to 90%. If it is 90% or 0.90, our critical value is 1.645. Our formula for N, let us substitute our values here. And this is equal to 67.65. Round up, this is equal to 68. Now, let us analyze the effect of confidence level to sample size. When our confidence level is 99%, our N is 166, 95% confidence level, N is 97, and 90% confidence level, N is equal to 68. So what do you notice? As confidence level decreases, the sample size also decreases. Gets, 
Our next topic is testing hypothesis.